Hey, it's Tom here from Gambadox, and today we're going to have a conversation with Cahill McCosker here of SDC Trailers in Northern Ireland. And they're our very first Gambadox Skills Module customer. We've got lots now, but I thought there was nobody else, nobody better on the planet to describe what you need to do to implement a skills matrix with Gambadox than Cahill here. So we're just going to have a conversation today to help you, our prospective customer, or maybe our customer, so that you're gonna be able to do this too. So we're just gonna do a demo matrix. Shall we just get kicked off, Cahill? No problem, I'm gonna go. So the first thing we need to do, Tom, is we need to identify the area or department mm -hmm. where we want to implement the matrix. We need to identify the operators or potential operators that might go in there. Uh -huh. And then we need to identify the SOP or the standards alongside the health and safety aspects in that department too. Cool. And then we compile it all together. So, so let's just do a demo. So first thing we'll do, create custom matrix. We're on the skills dashboard uh -huh. and we will just call it, we will call it Tom's demo, okay? So you've given it a title. Yeah. We have our skill levels here. So we've got non-applicable, training required, training in progress, training complete, mm. or successfully validated. So we've revealing no training or four levels and you can edit the text. The yes, they, they, they can be added very simply. You just go in, you select, delete, and you, you can add it in. So say, for example, cool. we want to do change this to on, on skill, yeah, on beautiful. skill, that's it. So you can apply that to whatever suits yeah. your own. But for most of the customers that are watching this, they, what comes out of the box will do yeah. the job yeah. for them. But you guys have customized it. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can, dis we'll come to it later actually, you can display the matrix with quadrants or percentages yeah. Yeah. or numbers. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay. But the next step would be then just add in the training associates. So as I say, you need to identify the operators that's going to be within this area. Uh -huh. Very simple. So we have your training associates tab. You just press add. Mm -hmm. And that will give you a list of preloaded training associates that you have added to your associates mm -hmm. and your, your, your trainees. This, this is a good thing because if you're an existing Gamadox customer, you've already got users in here. Yeah. But you might have a lot of people on your shop floor that aren't Gamadox mm -hmm. users yeah. and you can add them here as associates. So, so it's very simply, if there's someone that mm -hmm. isn't already added, uh, you can just click add uh -huh. new associate and you can you can enter their details so uh, you, you can even put their picture in you can put their well. picture and all in too well, yep so that leaves it nature. easier for people to identify uh -huh. who they are so but it's really easy to just do that one by one and you can give them tags or clock numbers yep, and all that that's stuff. It. Yep. It's also good to point out here that you can upload a CSV file. If you've got like hundreds of people, you yep. don't have to do this one by one. Yeah, yeah. You can get a format and a and CSV and holds in a list of names. One. That's, so it. that's yep. really cool because we wanted to make that really quick and easy. So mm -hmm. cool. Carl, let's see what's so so, in the detail. Hit save. Uh, so that user is now automatically uh, added in. Oh, I'm there. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're there already. Simple right. as that. Done. And should we add some more? Just so we'll add some more. So we have some already used. Many of our clients will already have Gemidos users, and they're yeah. they're going to show here that yeah. training associate we were talking about. Yeah. It's basically not a real full Gamadox user. They're just a name to report. They're just training. a name for, for training record purposes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. yeah that's it. All right, so let's add the... So the, we'll just we'll select a few here. Um, so as you can see, it also keeps track of how many people you're actually adding. So we're at six. Uh, or you, you also have the option if you have operators already set up, mm. you can select the department that they're in. Uh, um, you can also set it by date created or name A to Z. Mm. To say just for the purpose of this, we'll add a few people. Actually, the, the alphabetical order was one of your improvements. It was, uh, <laughs> it, it was good, I, definitely. Uh -huh. That was very beneficial. So it just makes it easy to find. Just makes it easy to find. So just say, for example, again, or if you know exactly who you're looking for, go into the search bar, type in their name for this. We'll look for Declan McKeever. There he is. We'll press add. And then whenever you select whatever number you need or whoever needs to be in it, they're all selected. 14 training associates done. Brilliant. That automatically adds all training associates to this Task. Fantastic. So then our next step is to add the training items. So next thing is SOPs, training items. So again, similar to training associates, you have this tab, mm -hmm. SOP training, you just press add. Mm -hmm. And then if you know exactly what you're looking for, so say, for example, we're going to look for, we'll say jigsaw, mm -hmm. something that's real health and safety based. So we add it, you just press add, it can come up. Mm -hmm. Or again, you have the option if you're going for a specific department. Yeah, you need to empty the search bar there. You can fill it first and yeah. then. So and then you can use your tags. Use tags. So you, mm -hmm. whatever it is set up. So let's say uh, we go to say flooring. 
mm -hmm. just use it. So we want to focus on flooring, you yeah. press apply, and that'll bring up all associate SOPs mm -hmm. or standards that's already there. So we can then go, instead of going through one by one, if you're happy that we need all those tuning items, you would just press uh, add all, mm -hmm. and that's that. Or if you have a tuning item that doesn't currently have an SOP, we also have a function add non-SOP. Because I know you guys have this issue where you we do offline yeah. things that aren't in Gambadox yet, yeah. but you can just name it. So just for now, until, until we get that mm. updated, yep, so mm. we just name it and all you do there is hit uh, non-SOP and you would just type in, I'll just write um, forklift just for this. Mm. So you type right. forklift and press add and that'll also be automatically added to the list Brilliant. compiled. So once you're happy, that's it. You can use operator photos to help identify. If you don't want to use that, very simply, no. you can just turn it off. Um, same thing, you have signatures. So for the likes of us, when we were implementing Gamba skills, we were working off our old training records. Uh -huh. So we, we thought, we'll not reinvent the wheel. We have the people signed off. So we, we can turn the signature yeah. section off, which allows us to transform so that like so when you're going from a new new matrix where you've already got a lot of documented signatures yeah you don't need that when you're just bringing this when one, we're just bringing that yes. it and bringing it up yeah. to date right so when it's a new start at starting we can then turn it on which means that that person can't be validated unless their signatures applied yeah, so right. it's good and then it's a very very good one again if you can set your target store Mm. That, that is used for identifying the gaps within a certain department. Mm -hmm. So it is. So you can set it to whatever you feel it is. So we'll just set it to 25 here. Mm -hmm. Whatever whatever's applicable for that area. So that's it. You've got all your operators. You've got your SOPs. You've got your skill levels. We're keeping our signatures on. And we've set a target or a gap viewer. Uh -huh. yeah. So all we'll simply do then. So that's basically set the axes of the matrix up. That's so we've got all our operators and all our training items. Yeah. And now we're going to update in the records. So now we're going to update or deliver training or yeah. update the records. So the first thing you'll do is you're selecting the trainer. So the mm -hmm. trainer is marked. So for audit reasons, we often find that the auditors are like, well, who is your trainer? Mm -hmm. So this identifies who the trainer is. Ah. So it's good and, that way. And that'll go into the individual training record when we're looking at Yeah, that will then go into individual mm -hmm. training records. So, so something I'd like to touch on here, Cal, you can display the, the training uh, competence levels at different ways. Yep. You've got there you've got uh, quadrants. So we've got or... circle quadrants, which is currently it's, it's blank. So say, for example, mm -hmm. if we go into Tom, mm -hmm. okay, successfully validated. Uh -huh. Okay, as you can see, it goes from a blank circle quadrant right through to a full. Mm -hmm. And then we would click finish and sign. Uh -huh. So do you want to? Oh, wow. The sign, Tom. Can I do that? I'll get you signed. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Maybe it should be it. I'll try that. And then my signature's is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine did not much better. So that would happen then as yeah. a trainer. I'm coming in to sort of counter sign and make sure, yes, this is validated. Uh, <laughs> you've got a much better signature than you. Can. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh -huh. Don't know. So that's it. So we have wow. set the validated level and we have signature finish and sign. So cool. And we now have a good visual uh -huh. of what area. Tom is signed off on. Awesome. And as you were saying, you have the option of the circle quadrant. You can go one to four number or you can go percentage. I want to look at this a wee bit deeper. So if we go back to me there, because I'm, okay. you know, I don't, I'm only a demo. doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I, one of the things we designed into Gamadox was so that you could really easily do a big update, like really rapidly zip through this matrix. Yep. So you could do like, mm -hmm. in theory, you can, Train, sign me off against yeah. 10 things here. So say, for example, if we take a training day mm -hmm. and within that training day, we have covered five, six or seven issues mm -hmm. in detail. So instead of individually saying in each one, yes, we can then go. So say, for example, you've got this SOP, mm -hmm. you're successfully so we'll, validated. We'll tick me off as... Yeah, we would go successfully valid, valid and here. you can go, I can to next, go to the next SOP. Yep. And that so still can... keeps you as the selected trainee. Yeah, and we can get... So now we're just going to finish it for the fun. Yeah. And now, when I'm signing that off, if I'm, there's yep. me, I'll just... You okay. So, that, that's saying. That lets me get signed off against all of those all at once. Yep. And then again, the, the trainer will come in too. And the other thing we should point out to our users here is that this can also be done in the mobile app. Yep. So, you can, as well as creating all of this on the, the app, you can also sign off 
the different training levels. And it's one of the features we, we've had since the early days in yep. the skills module. Yep. So you can just three dots of the SOP in the dashboard, update training record. And yep. if the signatures are switched on, yep. both people can sign it off live on the shop floor. Yes. So for you me, that was a game changing thing again, because you're not running around with pieces of paper. Yeah. And, and that, that that's a very good update because again, yes, we do sometimes take people under our training room for theory based, but there's also a lot of the times we're doing practical training on well, the shop floor. Uh -huh. So again, the use of the tablet now with this update allows us to carry out things yeah. on the shop floor. Uh -huh. So Cal, there's a, there's a few features you might not use every day on that pop up there. Can you take us through what they are? I might use them a bit, but I, I think they're very, very um, important features for the R. So one of them is if you're having, say, for example, external training or health and safety that requires a sign off certificate, uh -huh. you can attach the certificate here. You, you can pull it in from uh -huh. where it's saved. You can attach it there. So then it, it's always there. It's uh -huh. accessible. The other thing we can set training expiry dates. Let's have a look at that. I grabbed the mouse. Okay. You can put a trail in the So we can, so say, for example, the likes of our abrasive wheel, you know, we want mm. to refresh that every two to three years. So mm. we have you signed off today in this. So we can then go in, select expiry date. Uh, so you can then manually set it. Mm -hmm, cool. And so, that, yeah. that, that was for that kind of yeah. issue. So you've got a date that has expiry. You can plan that in here. It'll show that cell red in the matrix and yep. it'll also show up in your training dashboard. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a quick look at that. Yeah, that was a very well. good one. So, and then also we've got the planned training date. Planned training date. So if you have a planned date in mind that you think you're going to be able to do it, you can set this in here. So mm. similar to the training expiry, mm. you can select the on and then you just go to the mm. date and select the date mm. that you want to carry the train out. So, and again, it will give you the remainder. So if you're seeing any gaps, we're seeing any that gaps, you're not able yeah. to address today, but it yes. allows you to have a training plan. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll have a, we'll let's skip onto that mm -hmm. uh, in, in a little bit. We'll come back to the training dashboard and all of that. Okay. So this is a training dashboard here, and this mm. is what where all our department matrices or external training matrices mm. are all compiled in mm. one area. So as you can see, every area is covered. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is, again, for it's very user friendly. Oh. So that's something else I want. To, I want while we're there, yep. see the training associates because I often so, forget about it myself. So training associates, that's yeah. where we spoke about earlier is. Yeah. When you're adding training associates, uh -huh. this is an area that they are all saved. And you can edit them. You can edit them. them. Yep. So if we go into someone, you just click and you can go to edit. And their information's there. Again, if you want to change the photograph or if they have, have moved on or they're a lever, you can, same thing, you just press the button and we can archive uh, them. That was another Cahill improvement. Uh, that, that, <laughs> that's a good one. You were the one where we were, we, because you have to keep the record. We have to keep the record, yeah. We're not, when somebody leaves, we don't mm. delete their record. No, we, we just that. archive their, yeah. them as a user. Because right, so, that was the big thing. We, we, we can't delete it. Yeah. We have to have it safe somewhere. Mm -hmm. It is taking it away from the dashboard into uh, the archive. So it's cool. So, should we have a look at the analytics side of it? Okay. Another feature is we can check the analytics. Mm -hmm. So that just gives us a breakdown of, of what's happening, what's been happening, uh -huh. what's been completed, what's outstanding. Wow. So as you can see, so this is the number of training activities carried out to date, which is 924. And we've worked along 68 mm. new stars and, wow. and training associates recently. That's cool. And then what, what else can we see on here? So as we say, this is a good example. So we have planned training. So this is a backlog list. This was mm. planned training that we wanted to get done on the 25th, which we never got done. Uh, but the beauty of that is it's not forgot about. It's still visual. It's still there. Mm. We know, hang on a minute, we, we need to get this done. And you've also got when your training's expiring. So we've also, so this was mm. items that we set expiry dates. So we mm. can see now this is going to expire on the 25th of June of this year. Mm. So again, we know, right, this is coming up and we can plan in, in advance for and it. The other thing we designed into this, and I know you're using it, is that pretty much every single piece of data we're looking at there can be exported into an Excel file. Can be exported, mm. yep, mm. every bit. So that's cool. It's very, very good. It, it's just, it's a real good visual and it just leaves it really easy to manage and, and mm -hmm. stay in control of. For me, it's like someone, I, it's not a joke. We we call Gemba Docs Gemba Docs because everything can happen at the Gemba. Yes. So you can create documents, edit documents, access documents, and now you can train people. You can train. You don't have to, I know you guys do use a training room yep. for certain activities. Yep. But you don't have to. You can do everything live at the Gamba. Everything's and there. Now, I think, unless you've, we've missed anything, I think it'd be really cool if we can go out of the office for a wee bit and just look at how we're deploying them and making them real into the shop. Yeah. 
I think yeah, that'll, that'll be, be good. Cool. Yeah. Let's do that. Oh, brilliant. No problem. So Cahal and I are now back down in the shop floor looking at how the guys actually implement the matrices where it matters. <laughs> so Cahal, can you take us through that? Yep. So first thing we need to do is make sure that we have a QR code that's applicable to this area. Uh-huh. So very, very simple. Take our phone, tablet, whatever you want to use, mm-hmm. scan the QR code. Right. And that'll bring us to the relevant matrix. Mm-hmm. And that then brings us all information that we need. That's awesome. And so you guys are using numbers to display your training status. Yep. You've also got the gap on here. Yep. But you can also choose different ways. There's three other three uh, that's, options. That's the program. more traditional one. That's the one I would always use would be yeah. the, the circle quadrant. Mm-hmm. And like the great thing here, you can have lots of data on here. It's yep. so easy. And compared to a printed one, like which I've always used, or even a a marker on a whiteboard. Yeah. Keeping that up to date is an absolute it's, it's, disaster. It's a struggle. It's, uh-huh. it's a headache. It is so, so, so everything with, that, with this is live. Everything's live. Everything's live. Uh-huh. Every bit of information you need mm-hmm. is here. And the other cool thing, like what we built into the design, is that if there's an SOP on here, I don't know if these are all SOPs. Yep. So the good thing about uh, if there's a design, so say, for example, there it is there, we can just click on it. Wow. Uh-huh. And that will bring you to the SOP. And there's the SOP. So there's the all SOP. the information that somebody needs to run yes. a sale is here. So right here. Who's qualified to do what? Yep. Is here. All the instructions that they need are here. If you're going to do a training, mm-hmm. you can also do that here. Everything can be done here. And we can sign off here. Yep. I think um, that's all cool because whenever we were designing the software, I was like, is everybody going to have to put digital screens everywhere? And that's mm-hmm. going to be so hard. Yeah. And that's why we put the QR code in. That, that's why, so yes. So you, you can have this on a workstation, mm-hmm. a production line. You can have them all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And anybody, you don't need the app, can scan anybody that can QR scan. code and yeah. view the status. Yeah. So it's super, super powerful. And it's a game-changing thing, I think. And just what you said there about the screens, is it's not possible to have screens in every area, every department. Mm-hmm. So again, that's why the QR code was so important. Gamba Skills, it gives us the option to show this live on the floor. If we were to have and during the morning meeting or if there was oh, some right. big refresh that needed people needed to see this, mm. we can bring it up on the screen. Uh-huh. It's there. And again, it's good to get everybody together in a communal area so we can see, right, this is areas we need to focus on so the operators themselves mm. also know where they're at. Yeah. Cal, I think it'd be really cool to show people how we can actually sign off training records on the shop. Yeah. So I'm just gonna use my demo account for this. Okay. And like, so we can go, there's, there's me. I'm consistently demonstrating that. Yeah. And we can finish and sign. So, Tiernan's gonna be the trainer. Okay. Click here to sign. Yeah. I'm actually, that's me signing with my left hand, or right hand and I'm left-handed. <laughs> but for me, this is another game-changing feature. Yeah. You, very, you very don't good. have to run back to an office. All of that is doable here, out in the shop floor. Everything laid the Gamba. Done, dusted. <laughs> as simple as that, clicking a button, everything's updated. Uh-huh. Uh, brilliant.